Yo, what's up guys? So today we're gonna check out how we can make this reusable reveal animation, like right here. The animations only happen whenever something scrolls into the viewport. And we're gonna do all of this using React and a package called Framer Motion. If you've never used Framer Motion before, here are the documentation for it. Just Google Framer Motion or go to framer.com slash motion. This will give you an overview of everything. We're only gonna be using one or two things, but this is a super, super powerful library for animation specifically in React. Quick side note before we get started, if you want this entire portfolio template, so all of the code for this whole thing, not just the code for this animation. You can actually get all of it for free on my Gumroad. This is set at $0. Obviously, if you want to support me, feel free. This is going to come with both a JavaScript version of the entire thing, a TypeScript version of the whole thing, as well as a link to an unlisted video here on YouTube that's like 20 minutes long that walks through all of the code. You can also come in here and just get a live version of this. It's just hosted on for sale. We'll show you how to do that as well in that video. Um, but yeah, I just figured I would make this template available to all of you guys as a learning resource. And of course, if you want to use this for your own portfolio, you can, you, know, you can take it and kind of remix it however you want and make it your own. I'll have a link in my description to this Gumroad page as well as to the live version of this. Anyways, that's enough of this. Let's go ahead and get started with this animation. So I've gone ahead and ripped out all of the kind of fun stuff that's in this animation. We can go ahead and write it all from scratch. I did leave a little bit of a kind of framework for this component just because it's already wrapping a whole bunch of stuff in this project already. If you've downloaded this, you should be able to see these all over the place. They look something like this. What you'll notice is in my props, I'm using props.children. So if you're not familiar with this, this children prop, you'll see I'm typing it in TypeScript as jsx.element. If you got the JavaScript version, obviously this won't be here. Um, but all that that represents is whatever is passed inside of the element like this. So this h1, for instance, is going to be passed in as the children prop for that reveal. I'm also passing in width. This is just taking two different types, either fit content or 100%. And the reason that I'm doing that is for some of these different elements, for instance, this text, I want it to be fit content, but in some other places I might want it to be 100% of the full size of the element. Um, and that's just because of the way that the, uh, that kind of like little green screen thing that, or that's not a great way to say that, but the little kind of slide animation that comes in and out, um, I would like to be able to set that to the specific width. So if it's, you know, for instance, this, I don't want it to take the full size of the entire container that it's in. I just want it to be over the text here. Um, so yeah, if you're testing that, you can go ahead and remove that, play around with it and see what the difference is. But I went ahead and just made this a prop that I'm passing in, made it a little bit easier for me. So those are the props and that is the basics that we're starting with. Now, the first thing that I actually wanna do is I wanna change our component in here to use one of these frame or motion components. So essentially our frame or motion is gonna work is this motion thing that I'm importing here from frame or motion at the top is going to allow us to prepend any just normal elements with motion dot and it's just gonna give you essentially a super powered version of an HTML element. So for this div, for instance, I'm not doing anything on it right now, it's just gonna act as a normal div. But what this is gonna give us access to is a couple of different props that we can pass into this div. So for our case, kind of the first most important thing that we're gonna to wanna to define anytime we're using Framer like this is our different variants or kind of like our different states of an animation. They call those variants. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass in a prop called variants. And I'm gonna set that equal to an object like this. And we can name variants whatever we want. So for our case, we're gonna want two of them. One we're gonna call, let's say, hidden. This is gonna be the initial state of how we want our element to look. So for ours, we'll say opacity of, oops, of zero, and say a Y, so like a Y translate of 75 pixels. You could call this whatever you want. You could call it banana, you could call it cheeseburger, you could call it, you know, start whatever for mine i'm using hidden and then we're going to want to transition that to something else so i'm going to duplicate this down and we'll say maybe visible and that's going to want to go to an opacity of one and a y translate of zero now you could have a whole bunch of these in here with different states if you wanted that you know could be triggered by different things but for ours we just have kind of this initial state which is the element is off screen or before the page is loaded and then this is whenever the element comes into the viewport. Now, obviously, if you see we refresh, nothing is actually going to have changed yet because just because we've defined these variants does not mean that we're actually triggering them yet. These animations down here are using a different thing, so ignore those, but everything else. Um, in, or in order to actually trigger those, I'm gonna come back to our motion component here. We'll add a new line, and the prop that it's gonna expect for your kind of initial state is just called initial. And this is just gonna take a string, which is going to map to one of these keys. So for our case, it's gonna be hidden. Of course, typo again. So hidden here is mapping to hidden here. If I wanted it to start at visible for whatever reason, I could start it as visible and then move it to hidden later or whatever. Now for our animate state, we're actually gonna change this uh, in a second, but just for demonstration purposes, I can pass in another prop here called animate. 
And this is gonna work the same way. We can just say visible like this. And now if we save this, and I can go ahead and refresh our screen, we should get our first little bit of our animation, right? So we're seeing that this kind of pops up into view whenever something happens or whenever we refresh the screen. But as I scroll down, you're gonna see that as new stuff enters the screen, it's not then animating into the screen. We'll fix that in a second, but before we do that, I wanna add one more thing, which is a prop called transition. See that pops up there. And this is just kind of our transition properties. So things like duration, delay, which is exactly what we're gonna add here. Go ahead and pass in a duration of, in our case, we're gonna say 0.5 seconds and a delay of 0.25 seconds. The reason I'm adding this delay is because in a moment, we're gonna have that little green thing kind of like down here to do uh, add slide div thingy thingy can't even spell thingy right still not spelling it right point just being i want to uh, run this before i run this animation so i'm gonna have a little bit of delay on this so that our next animation can fire first and then this has a little bit of delay on it but anyways yeah so if we save that it should still work go ahead and refresh this so we can see it again it takes a little bit longer now and now all that we want to do is somehow control whenever this animate visible happens and uh we're gonna get we're gonna need a couple of things here so we're gonna need use ref and use effect from react as well as use in view and use animation which they are all just react hooks uh from frame motion first things first we're gonna need to add a ref to our div here and we're gonna use that in tandem with this use in view hook to tell whenever our element is in view so we can go ahead and define that we'll just say a const ref oops const ref is equal to use ref and we can just initialize that as null and then come on down to our wrapping div here and set that ref here. So right now this is doing nothing. We're just setting a reference to this uh, div element here. What this is gonna allow us to do though is under our rev, we'll say const is in view. And what this is gonna do is going to use the, if I can actually type it right, this use in view hook and this use in view hook from frame or motion is going to expect some ref. So the reference to the element that you're wanting to add this kind of a intersection observer on as well as optionally some parameters. In our case, I just care about one of these, which is once, sorry about my dogs in the background, and we're gonna set that to true. If you didn't set this once to true, then anytime that you kind of scroll up and down, this is gonna continue firing on and off and uh, flipping this Boolean back and forth. We just want this to happen one time though. Uh, so we can go ahead and demonstrate this actually logging. We'll say, say use effect, and then use effect just as normal. We just want this to refire anytime that is in view changes. And all that we need to do here is just say, I'll just say console log for now is in view. Go ahead and pop open our developer console here. Delete this, refresh so we can see what's happening. And we don't really care about that either. But point being here is if as we uh, scroll down here and stuff starts to come in view, you'll see you'll start getting more logs here. So we've gotten three of them of logs so far. As we keep going, more things come into view. You're gonna get more and more logs because I have this wrapping a whole bunch of stuff. Now, obviously we don't just wanna be logging here. We wanna actually be doing something. So super quick, so we can go ahead and change that. All that I need to do is go ahead and uh, I'm gonna replace this console log. We'll say if is in view like this. And we want to say fire the animation. Another way that we're gonna do that is relatively straightforward as well. Oops, actually I imported an extra thing here, I think. And uh, we get this use animation hook from Frame Motion as well, which is gonna give us these things called controls. So uh, well, we're gonna need two of them. So I'm gonna call the first one main controls, set that equal to this use animation hook. And then all that we need to do with these controls is down here, wherever we're adding our variant for animate, I could just replace that with our controls. And this is gonna give us access to manually set through code when we actually want to transition from one state to another. So if I come in here and I say main controls, click dot, we're going to see we have one called start. And start is just going to take a string which maps to one of our variants. So in this case, we'll say visible. So visible here is mapping to visible uh, here, rather. And now we should see, I can go ahead and get rid of our console here. As I scroll down, stuff comes into view, this code fires, and everything starts to kind of animate in. And that's pretty much the basics of it. So now the last little thing that we need for this specific one is uh, that little kind of green thing that I've stubbed out here. The first thing we're gonna need for this is another set of controls. So we'll call this say slide controls. That's gonna work the exact same way as our other controls here. And as opposed to writing all of this from scratch, I'm just gonna copy paste it and we'll walk through it because uh, kind of trivial, but a lot of code, so. Just go like this, or not a lot of code, 15 lines maybe. Uh, but yeah, so here's that code. I've just have our motion.div here. Has a couple of variants in the exact same way. I'm calling them both also hidden and visible, starting at a left of zero, animating to a left of 100%, using our slide controls, set initial to hidden, 
have this little transition here. Again, we have a duration of 0.5 seconds here and then delay here so that it comes afterwards. And we're essentially just setting this absolutely to this outer div here with the position of relative. And if we go ahead and save that, we'll see that that now has this kind of green slide thing. As we scroll down, both of these are scrolling whenever things come into view and we have our finished animation. You can use these exact same principles, create all kinds of cool stuff. Feel free to check this out again. You can get this whole project on my Gumroad if you want to see the actual code for this, as well as a bunch of other code. There's JavaScript versions if you're not familiar with TypeScript, TypeScript versions, video again covering all of the code, walking through all of it, how to launch it on Brazil, all kinds of fun stuff. So check that out. Totally free. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.